Hi, this is Rachel from TLC Inspirations, and today we are going to felt some Christmas ornaments. And we're just going to do um, balls like this. And this is all felted with roving and wool. And so is this. And there's all kinds of little designs we can play with really easy to do and so we're gonna do that today uh, the first thing we're gonna want to do is wind balls of um, of wool because what we're gonna do is wash them and felt them and so you just kind of wind them up and I'm using I'm actually using fisherman's wool which is pretty inexpensive and felts up real nicely um, keep in mind the shape as you go along. So as you're winding, you want to keep kind of rolling things around and try and keep it as even as possible so you actually come out with a ball at the end. Once you're done winding, you're going to throw your ball in the washing machine. Okay, and when you do that, you want to throw it in with hot water and detergent and something to agitate it. Be careful what you choose for agitation because this little wool ball Little fuzzy little wool pieces will come off it and stick to everything. On the other side of the spectrum, whatever you put in there is going to collect that and or put lint back onto these balls. It will also absorb other lint from say, sometimes from towels. Um, I always use jeans as my agitation because it's a nice, heavy, sturdy fabric. It doesn't really collect lint and it really doesn't give any off. So for me, it's the best option. I know a lot of people use old towels. Um, I've done that and I didn't like the outcome. I ended up with a lot of lint all over my towels. So your choice. Um, once you get it through the wash and you may need to wash it a couple times, make sure your water's really, really hot. Make sure you have the detergent and then throw it in a hot dryer. Um, I had to do this two or three times, but my water is not really, really hot in this house, so um, that will make a difference. Anyways, you want to get to the point where you cannot decipher the yarn. And as you can see in this particular ball, you can't really tell where the yarn pieces are. Now in this one, you can. It's, it is felted, but it's not all the way felted because you can see yarn pieces throughout this. This I would need to felt at least probably one more time. I'm going to go ahead and recreate the mitten one <clears throat> because it does two different ways of felting. Cut off a good length here. And I'm going to, I've cut out my um, stencil for this. And all I'm using this for is to outline. And it just kind of helps keep me on track. So I'm just going to start on the outside, I'm just going to tack down little bits and pieces of this to kind of hold it in place. We just keep going around like that. And we're going to go back over this and we're going to um, really felt this in nicely. But we're just doing some slow poking and stabbing here in important places that will help keep it in place when we do start the full on felting process. Okay, when we get to the thumb, we kind of have to double up a little bit here. And we're going to create a little corner. At least we're going to try to here. If I don't suck in my paper. Again, be extra careful of your fingers here.
and we're coming right back around where we started, which is at the thumb. And so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut off, I'll leave a little tiny overlap there that we can mash together. Take this off, and we've got a decent outline of a mitten there. So now what we're gonna do is really felt this in place. And I'm gonna start near the thumb because it's where my beginning and end pieces are. So I wanna make sure I get those right. Okay, so I've got a pretty decent outline here. And what I'm gonna do is now fill it and when I fill something, I almost always use roving. I know some people will swirl yarn in there and that's, that's another option. Um, I prefer to be able to add roving and I'm gonna use this really great color of roving that I have. Okay, and I'm gonna start with a small amount and I'm gonna start up at the top and I'm just gonna start felting. And I'm gonna try and keep close to the edge when I start. And I still wanna have my nice outline of yarn, so I'm gonna try not to go over that with my felting. So you can see right there how I'm coming right up to the edge. And then as I start going, it's just gonna flatten out and it's gonna pull, so you wanna keep what you can near the edge but remember, you can always add more felt. Okay, now you can see I've got a little starter here and here my brown is still showing through, so I'm gonna add more. I'm just gonna add little tufts at a time because as it is, I have to wind them around in this tiny little spot. So I don't wanna overwhelm myself here. And again, I'm gonna pay very close attention to the edges. And it really doesn't matter how you're roving um, crisscrosses over itself because it's all gonna be felted down and it's all gonna be interwoven at the end. Um, you will notice, you know, bald spots and that's when you just add a little bit more and a little bit more here and a little bit more there. And that's perfectly fine. On this one, I actually continued with the yarn, and what I did is I tacked it from one edge to the other and just kept building it down. And I haven't actually felted it yet, so I'm not quite done. So now that we're tacked, we can just go ahead and felt the yarn itself. And if this, the reason I haven't cut this off is because if it doesn't fill enough, I can go back across and I can cover little pieces back and forth. So I'm leaving that little piece on there until I'm done in case I need to cover. Make sure and keep your needle straight so you don't break it. And if you haven't done needle felting before, please see my beginner video on that. For this, I personally like using the ribbon. I think it just looks nicer. 
Um, to do that, got a piece of ribbon here. I'm going to thread a darning or yarn needle, something that has um, the sharp point to get through the wool. And I just want it to be a single piece, so we're going to keep this nice and short. And we're going to go through this little ball. This is a small one. The larger you get, the less likely you're going to get this whole needle through. But because it's pliable, you can push it through. And I'll show you that in a second. But I'm going to show you a small one first. You want to find your center. And I tend to eyeball it, so we'll see how we do. If you have a hard time pulling this needle out, go ahead and use a pair of pliers. Okay, so now I've got this going all the way through. So now what I do is make sure I don't pull this all the way through, but I'm going to pull through a little bit and then I'm gonna go right back down. I'm gonna to try to come out the same place I went in or somewhere real close. That'll work. Make sure you hold on to your loop on the other side. Okay, so now we've got two pieces dangling on the bottom and a nice tight loop on top. So pull through however big you want your loop to be and then at the bottom, oops, at the bottom you just tie this off and then you pull this tight and you've got something that looks like this at the, end, at the bottom, which is actually kind of cute. You can also just use yarn. Okay, now yarn, I'm gonna double up here for the piece, and which one am I gonna do? I think I'll show you how to put one through the large one. Try and get in the center here. Okay, now you're gonna push it all the way in as much as you can. You can see it's not coming out the top, but if you press the bottom down on a, flat, on a hard, flat surface, aha, uh -huh, there it is. You're kind of flattening the ornament. See it poke out? Be real careful with your fingers here because if you're off, you're gonna poke your finger. And then I use a pair of jewelry pliers but you, any pliers will work. Yank that little sucker out. And then we are just going to cut the needle out, tie that off, and tie off the bottom. Okay, pull this side up as tight as you want it. And then just clip off. Okay, so easy peasy. Um, please comment, rate, and subscribe. And if you have any questions, put them in the comments. I'll be happy to try to help out. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.